Kia ora. The New Zealand AIDS Foundation is proud to present its 2008 annual report on DVD. We decided to do this to reflect our commitment to the use of new technologies in the fight against HIV. We haven't dispensed with tradition entirely. First up, here's the Chairman of the Board, Mark Hendrickson. This past year at the Foundation has been one of consolidation and pulling together what the implications are for the new trust deed and for the organization. It's been a very exciting year, a very busy year. And while it may not appear that a lot has happened on the surface, there's been a tremendous amount in the organization that's, that's come together so that we flesh out what the new trust deed actually means for the organization. We achieved recognition from the Charities Commission, which was tremendously important for the long-term survival and benefit of the organization. The new trust deed uh, was put in place after two and a half years of extremely hard work and we want to recognize the tremendous efforts of Hani Jeremy Lambert, Grant Robertson, Cameron Law, Michael Stevens, Richard Tankersley and Warren Lindbergh who contributed tremendous talent, time and energy to the development of the new trust deed. That trust deed has truly revolutionized the way the foundation does its business. What the board's been doing over the last year is figuring out exactly what it means to have both an appointed and an elected board and putting together some, some rules, some ways of doing our business around that has been a complex process and uh, I think, we've, I think we've, we've done a reasonably good job of putting that in place now. The new trust deed reaffirmed the objectives, the original objectives of the organization uh, from 1985 to reduce the transmission of HIV and to support those people living with HIV and to maximize their health and well-being. We reaffirmed the organization's commitment to biculturalism and at the same time we also reaffirmed our commitment to our services and to taking care of those most at risk with particular attention to gay male communities. Uh, so we believe that this new trust deed both continues the traditions and the, and, and the founding principles of what the organization's about, while at the same time meeting the contemporary demands of a changing political and economic environment in New Zealand. As a part of the revision of the trust deed, we now have elected trustees. And those elected trustees are accountable in, in a very direct and specific way to the membership of the organization. Another thing then that we've been doing, which we think is extremely important, is expanding the membership of the foundation. And over the last few months even, we've already expanded the actual membership of the organization by over 100%, and we're very excited about that. One of the important things we've done in the last year is to purchase a building. Now, that, that building purchase has done a number of things for us. Firstly, it has reduced our, our annual costs so that our, we're paying a mortgage now rather than rental, and that's financially a very good decision to make. Secondly, it ensures that the foundation is going to be there into the future. Unfortunately, it seems that there is no cure on the horizon, so we are going to need to be around for some time. The purchase of the building is going to ensure that we have a physical presence in New Zealand for the foreseeable future. And finally, that purchase of the building is going to ensure that we have a physical asset so that we are ensuring the financial stability of the organization for a very long time to come. To give an overview of the Foundation's past year, here's the Executive Director, Rachel Limazurio. We have been living now with at least the four or five years of HIV increase in diagnosis amongst men who have sex with men, and another group that has also been working with the impact of HIV has been migrants, particularly from Africa, from high prevalence countries who have come to New Zealand and been diagnosed whilst here.
These communities are absolutely crucial to us. It's most important that the AIDS Foundation stays engaged, that we are in dialogue with um, those communities and we both employ and have volunteers from within those communities so that we can stay in touch and understand some of the challenges both in HIV prevention but also care and support for those living with HIV. In many ways, the last 12 months have actually placed the AIDS Foundation in an extremely strong position. We have got the most stunning team. We have got volunteers in numbers that we haven't seen literally for 10 years. We've got a very thorough and dynamic board, trust board, and we've got a trust deed and a building and a range of services across the country that have not been seen um, in the AIDS Foundation for a very long time. For some time now, the New Zealand AIDS Foundation has been very focused on trying to rebuild our relationship with Māoridom. We're very aware that both struggles in, in our, um, changing our trust deed and the ways in which we as a non-government organisation, but specifically focusing on men who have sex with men and the African community, ensure that we're able to both honour the, the, our trust deed, its commitment to biculturalism, and recognise our relationship to the treaty and to Māoridom. That is very important to the board, it's very important to myself and it's very important to the New Zealand AIDS Foundation staff that as we look at where we've come from, we also make strong commitment to improving those relationships as we go forward. A major component of the last 12 months was the significant recognition that we received in respect to our leadership in HIV, prevention and care and support, not just in New Zealand, not just in our region, but globally. The New Zealand AIDS Foundation was specifically asked to join the government at the UN AIDS Programme Coordinating Board in April, and also to join the government as part of the government delegation to the United Nations General Assembly on HIV and AIDS in June. Both those opportunities made it very clear that not only is New Zealand still uh, a world leader in some of our prevention strategies and the way in which we approach our policy and our legislative change in New Zealand, we're also able to ensure that human rights stay paramount as the fundamental effective strategy for bringing HIV down in any country. I personally can say that I am incredibly excited to be working for New Zealand AIDS Foundation, particularly at this point in time. On a day-to-day -day basis, I am seeing ideas, innovation, the type of cross-program teams working together with just extraordinary passion, extraordinary focus on ensuring that we, the New Zealand AIDS Foundation, do see real progress on bringing down HIV infections amongst men of sex with men and ensuring that the communities at risk, such as the African communities, have the support they need to make sure that they too can bring down HIV infections and ensure anybody living with HIV or affected by HIV gets the care and support that they, they need to enable them to maximise their health and well-being.